Thank you. Um, I'd first like to thank uh, the Pontifical Academy and in particular Monsignor Marcello Santo Sorondo, my friend, for organizing today's event. It's a pleasure to be here alongside so many leaders, people who are passionate to see refugees welcome because these are some of the most vulnerable people in our world. Firstly, also, I would like to recognize the efforts of Italy and Greece. They have been at the front of the international response to those who arrive in Europe. And we should thank the mayors of Lesvos, Lampedusa, and Palermo, where I've seen firsthand the dignity their communities show to some of the most vulnerable people. And we must also acknowledge that they have sheltered the world's response, often whilst the world sat by just observing. <laughs> the trafficking of human beings is currently estimated to affect 45 million people across the world. This is a crime that deprives people of their right to life, their right to security, and their right to freedom. And the crisis situation we see with the migration issues is precisely the place where this crime thrives. The International Organization of Migration reported that as many as 70% of those arriving across the Mediterranean displayed indicators of being trafficked. That means they have been exploited in some way, often sold for sex, forced to commit crimes, or forced to do labor, and now we see even being sold for their organs. It is therefore vital that we better incorporate protection measures against modern slavery and human trafficking and the risk to migrants into global humanitarian responses. Over 65 million people are now on the move, fleeing conflict and persecution, a record high. With limited ways to provide for their families, displaced people are highly susceptible to being deceived into exploitation by traffickers promising a better life. The vulnerability can arise in an instant, and these crisis situations are resulting in increased levels of human slavery across the world. The injustice we are seeing in the current refugee crisis is unprecedented and unacceptable. The crisis is fueling the evil trade in human beings as criminals opportunistically take advantage of some of the world's most vulnerable. It is our duty to develop and implement measures that not only protect and support existing refugees and migrants, but future travelers too. And I was part of a project with Monsignor Sanchez Sorondo in order that there was a sustainable development goal, particularly focusing at modern slavery. And I'm pleased to say that 8.7 is now focusing on that particular issue. So one of the things I have done, having visited certain regions, is I submitted reports to my, three of my secretaries of state solely focusing on the refugee crisis and the risks of trafficking and slavery that occur. Following my visits to Calais, Italy and Greece, I have outlined to the secretaries of state the suffering I witnessed and push for action so urgently required. And some of these recommendations are being implemented, but more is needed. Ultimately, my aim is for protection of the vulnerable and a warm welcome for those who have no hope of home elsewhere. I was astounded and amazed at the number of unaccompanied children stranded and at high risk once they arrive in Europe. Every child has a different story and therefore requires a unique response. But many do indeed share risk factors that need to be understood and addressed accordingly. I have found that children who have suffered from abuse in their past may not recognize the trafficking situation as they would consider it to be the normal or something they have become used to. In addition, a number of healthcare practitioners have found that the emotional and psychological disorders in a child enhances vulnerability and attachment issues, often causing them to return to their exploiter. Unaccompanied children are more likely to have excessive trust in strangers who appear to take care of them, who then force them into committing petty crime, 
alcohol misuse, drug taking, or even selling them for sex. Furthermore, a strong desire to escape poverty and deprivation pushes children to accept some degree of exploitation and abuse and to do things that they otherwise would find uh, against what they would normally do. It is up to us to intervene and in particular protect these young people. The vulnerability these ch children face is an evil of exploitation and this demands a humanitarian response and it is the responsibility of this generation to deliver. Such a response will need to address immediate care provisions upon arrival, child-specific assistance, effective assessment of vulnerability to trafficking, and long-term sustainable support, integration, and forward planning that anticipates the needs of those who are yet to arrive. We also need to go back to the beginning, to the root of the problem, and look at development in countries of origin. We need to better understand the push and pull factors that lead people to undertake such perilous journeys. And until we tackle this at source, we are only providing a band-aid approach, never truly dealing with the wound itself. I am working in Nigeria, where I'm pushing our international development uh, funding to provide support in Edu State, where we know over 96% of the women and girls arriving in Europe are trafficked from by giving them job opportunities there, by creating rule of law and encouraging communities to work together, we have a chance of stopping this at source. We must also focus on capacity building of law enforcement. Criminals use every opportunity to exploit the vulnerable, vulnerabilities of migrants and refugees, in particular children, and we must be one step ahead. Criminals know exactly what migrants need. They abuse their trust and communicate deceitful messages. In Thessaloniki, I met a young family in their tent who had a six-day-old baby. The father, a 27-year-old Syrian, was a civil engineer. His wife was a trainee doctor. He explained how many of his friends and family had been killed, and he could never have imagined this could have occurred in his lifetime, or that he would have taken such huge risks on a route to Europe, including traveling across the Mediterranean. His current circumstances were far from what he had imagined or anticipating when studying at universities, but these are the very lives we must protect. I believe that human trafficking and modern slavery are serious organized crimes and have to be addressed as such. This means adopting a similar law enforcement approach to counter-terrorism, including using covert techniques to collect intelligence and build a better picture of the ongoing crime in order to dis drastically disrupt the criminal networks. In these circumstances of despair, we do see inspiration and hope. Doctors and nurses who are volunteering to deliver life-saving medical support to the Coast Guards who I met in Lampedusa who jump into the dangerous waters to rescue drowning mothers and children. But in addition to this, I hope to see concerted efforts from governments and states to deliver the change they repeatedly promise. Modern slavery and human trafficking is described by my Prime Minister as the greatest human rights issue of our time. And the European migrant situation is described by the United Nations Secretary General as the worst refugee crisis since World War II. And Pope Francis has placed the issue of human slavery at the lead and one of the priorities of his pontificate. So when you bring the two issues of the migrant crisis and the trafficking of human beings together, we have the world's biggest issue. But we do not have the world delivering a coordinated or proportionate response. The family I met with in Greece ask that I do all I can to ensure their six-day-old six child can have a life of normality in what has become a very abnormal world. As leaders, it is up to us to do all we can and indeed, indeed demand that our governments, cities, towns, people, 
and agencies across the, view, the globe view success in the terms of how we treat our fellow man, not just purely in financial or commercial terms. If we do that, we may be able to see that this six-day-old six child and his generation can look at us as people who made a better world, not just the generation who said a great deal, but acted merely as observers, watching as things simply declined and where the value of human life was merely a marginal issue. From my position, I will do all I can to protect and serve that six-day-old child. I do not want the people who are being forced out of, into migration to become an isolated community. We need to stop people who are trading in human lives, who are selling people and making money out of human misery. If we work together, we can actually pursue these vile criminals and exploiters so that we can finally place this abhorrent crime where it needs to be, which is in the annals of the world's libraries and in the history books, so that perhaps that six-day-old child has got a future and the generations that come after him can look at us as saying that we did something and not that we just stood by and let the world come to a very sad end. I think all of us being here today is an element that can show that we can make a difference, but I think the time for words and speaking has almost come to an end, and what we need to do is to see action, which is something I'm very much committed to do. Thank you very much.